Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is 3 p.m. Cairo local time. It's time for Panorama News, a comprehensive review of the world of politics, business, and sports. I'm Raham Morsi, and I'll be presenting the politics. Let's take a look at the headlines. President Sisi meets former U.S. Secretary of Defense. Prime Minister Mahlab in Jordan for joint higher committee meetings. And two Saudi border guards die in Yemen shelling. President Abdel Fattah Sisi met with U former U.S. Secretary of Defense and former head of the CIA, Leon Panetta. During the meeting, President Sisi said that the Egyptian people managed to preserve its identity, adding that the people will prevail. Presidential spokesman Ala Youssef said that the talks also covered developments in Egypt over the past four years, as well as the situation in the region in light of the threat posed by terrorist groups. For his part, the former head of the held, hailed rather Egypt's role in the region and its efforts to combat terrorism. President Abdel Fattah Sisi said that parliamentary elections will be held by the end of this year. The Sisi made the statement during his meeting on Wednesday with heads of a number of political parties. During the meeting, the president expressed appreciation of an initiative by political parties of a unified proposal for amending parliamentary election laws. The proposal was approved by 38 parties and was referred to the cabinet to study. The president called on all parties to put aside differences for the sake of serving the country's interests. Zizi also expressed willingness to support unified lists of all parties and political powers in the upcoming parliamentary elections. Presidential spokesman Ambassador Ala Youssef said that the president discussed with the heads of political parties the latest developments in Egypt, including the economic situation and fighting terrorism, especially in Sinai. Prime Minister Rahim Mahlab headed the Egyptian side in the meeting of the 25th round of the Egyptian Jordanian Higher Committee. During the meeting, both sides signed a number of cooperation protocols and agreed on increasing the volume of trade exchange. The story. Prime Minister Rahim Mahlab and his Jordanian counterpart Ahmed Massoud co-chaired the meetings of the Higher Egyptian Jordanian Committee in the Jordanian capital Amman, where they witnessed the signing of 10 cooperation protocols in the fields of irrigation, radio and television, civil services and competition protection. During the meeting, both sides agreed on increasing the trade volume between both countries, as they also stressed the significance of the private sector as well as the importance of boosting investments in mega, medium and small projects. The committee also discussed coordinating political stances on a number of regional issues as well as efforts to combat extremism and terrorism in light of the present threats of Daesh and other terrorist groups. Separately, Prime Minister Ibrahim Mahlab met with Jordanian businessmen and Egyptian investors. The Prime Minister reiterated that Egypt's stability and security reflect on the whole region's stability. He also noted that Egypt is determined to carry out the third and last step of the roadmap, which is holding the parliamentary elections. Mahlab also conveyed President Abdel Fattah Sisi's invitation to Jordan's King Abdullah II to attend the inauguration of the new Suez Canal project on the 6th of August. Foreign Minister Sama Shukri headed to the Nigerian capital Abuja to attend the inauguration of Mahmoudou Bahri as president. The spokesman for the foreign ministry said that Egypt's participation in the ceremony reflects the keenness to enhance its relations with African countries. Meanwhile, security was beefed up in and around Nigeria's capital as final preparations were made for the ceremony. The 72-year-old, who defeated incumbent Goodluck Jonathan in elections two months ago, will be sworn in at a ceremony on Friday before world leaders and other dignitaries. Among those who have confirmed attendance are South Africa's President Jacob Zuma, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry, and Minister Laurent Fabio. Soldiers were out in force on the streets, including at main entry points into the city, while there was a visible police presence at key locations such as hotels and government buildings. Zuhairi, who headed a military regime at the 1980s, took office just days after a deal was reached to end the crippling fuel shortage that brought the country to a near standstill. Egypt kept the Rafah border crossing with the Palestinian Gaza Strip open. The 
The authorities decided to extend the period of opening for third day to allow more stranded Palestinians across to the Gaza Strip. The border crossing opened for three days exceptionally from one direction, allowing hundreds of Palestinians from Egypt, as well as other Arab and foreign countries, to pass through. The Egyptian authorities also allowed humanitarian aid to pass to the Palestinian side. In response, the Palestinian embassy in Cairo expressed its appreciation to the Egyptian authorities for their efforts to alleviate the suffering of Palestinian people.